Hello. Uh, today we're going to look at um, an optimization calculus problem, IB style. A little bit more complicated than the typical optimization problems, um, and you'll see why in just a moment. Um, for starters, I need to know that um, I'm working with the relationship between a cone and the um, surface area of the curved portion of the cone, which forms this particular sector. So if we unraveled the top of the cone, um, it would look like this particular sector right here. Therefore, we have a connection between the radius and height of the cone to its slant height. That slant height becomes the radius of this particular sector. What I'm trying to optimize, then, is uh, the area of this particular sector, and based on the labels that I have, usually it's uh, one-half pi r squared, but in this case, r is the slant height of the cone. So one-half, I said pi, I meant theta, l squared. That's the thing that we need to optimize. And the reason this is challenging is because we need to get everything in terms of r, the radius of the base of the cone. That includes theta, this angle right here, which is apparently dictated by what I choose the radius of the cone to be. So too is the height and everything else. So um, I take the information that I have and I put down some information that I know right out of the gate. For example, I have information about the volume of this cone, so I write down the volume formula, and I know the connection between the slant height of the cone and the radius of the sector is a Pythagorean relationship, so I write that down as well. This should hopefully get me started in being able to express the area of the sector in terms of just the radius of the cone. As you can see, the radius doesn't even exist in this formula right now. So what other known information do I have? Um, I do know, for example, that the volume of the cone is 81 pi, and so we uh, substitute that into this formula and do some quick manipulations, and we can find that the height is equal to 243 over r squared. That's by dividing um, one-third pi r squared from both sides to get solve for h. What that does then is enables me to express my slant height in terms of just the radius, and I get the height out of the equation. So there I substituted the height here, and uh, that of course has to be squared, and therefore when I clean it up a little bit, I get the slant height, L, in terms of R, the radius. So that I could put into my original sector area equation. As you can see, we still have a problem, and that is theta is not written in terms of r yet. So I have um, the slant height in terms of r, but I still need to get theta in terms of r. So that's where I go to arc length. Arc length of any sector is equal to, um, or this particular sector is equal to the, um, the angle in radians, as you recall, that produces an arc, times the radius, which in this case is l. So the arc length is l theta. We know that the arc length in this case is 2 pi r, and we know that uh, L is represented by all that fancy square ready stuff and theta here. So now I can actually see that there's theta can be expressed in terms of r by simple division. It looks simple, but uh, I mean it is simple, but it looks really ugly. But bear with, if we just take that theta value and substitute that in for here, then we see an equation with just r in it, and that's satisfactory. And then I see something even more that I like. Here is r squared plus 243 squared over r to the fourth, and here is also r squared plus 243 squared over r to the fourth. This whole base is to the one-half power, and this whole base is to the one power, so I'm gonna use my properties of exponents here, subtract the exponents so that I get one-half, or sorry, the, the half and the twos divide out, so we're left with just the pi r, so that's the pi r right there, and then this base is going to be taken to the one-half power, also known as the square root. So I just did a little exponent manipulation here uh, to get this simplified. This looks very similar to the formula that I'm supposed to be proving. Uh, however, there's an r to the sixth here, and there's an r in the denominator, and that's not what I see here. So that's what I'm going to recognize, that I need to get rid of the fractions under the radical to get this to look like that. So I'm going to factor out 1 over r to the fourth from the inside of this expression, which uh, produces r to the sixth times 243 squared, or plus 243 squared, which is good. I like the way that's looking. The 1 over r to the fourth can be taken out of the radical and square rooted, so it becomes 1 over r squared. And finally, you can see the r's are going to divide out. 
and we just get pi over r times the square root of r to the 6 plus 243 squared. So that's the formula we were supposed to prove. Just a quick summary, uh, the reason why this is slightly more challenging than your typical is usually we can just do one substitution and we'll be able to go into our optimization formula and get it all in terms of two variables, the one we're trying to optimize plus an independent variable. In this case, we needed to use multiple parts of the geometry in order to be able to get both theta and slant height uh, in terms of r the radius. Now for the optimization piece, um, a quick reminder that if you're optimizing, and this is only true if you're optimizing, you're looking for a maximum or a minimum, you can square the object of your optimization to get rid of any radicals, and when you find the maximum of the squared function, it will be the same maximum for the unsquared function. This gets rid of the radical and gives me a straight polynomial to work with. Very easy to differentiate then. And since the derivative of s squared needs to equal 0 to be optimal, I just take this expression here, set that equal to 0, and solve. Um, it requires a little bit of um, uh, algebraic manipulations, but you should be able to handle that if you've made it this far in the video. And uh, this was expressly a non-calculator problem, um, so it's the uh, requirements for getting h and r um, in exact form is a little bit ugly, but it works. Just out of curiosity, to make sure that these numbers are reasonable and that they make sense, I did give me the decimal equivalent for these, um, but this is the radius and the height um, of the largest possible cone. Now, if I had more time and this, wanted to make this video longer, I would show you how we would check that uh, using Desmos, but for the purposes of this video, the, the primary goal was to demonstrate how sometimes we need multiple substitutions in order to make an optimizable equation with calculus. And uh, the other quick reminder is with radicals, you can square the function and find the maximum that way. Oftentimes, it makes your calculus easier to bear. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.